Okay, I'm dealing with the uh, linear today, the uh, linear amplifier with a 3-502. I've made a few changes as you can see now from the last one. In this case we have a, a choke here which I've made. It's 170 microhenries and the parasitic choke which is this thing right there sitting on top of the tube that is a um, one that uh, Ameritron uses in their linear amplifiers. The um, choke, by the way, here, the plate choke, was made with a dowel and some screws, obviously some hardware. I'm not going to touch it. Here, copper parts, which are parts that are readily available from hardware stores like Lowe's. Again, it rolls like this. It's very easy to solder to. The tuning coil, or the uh, tank coil, and capacitor arrangement is still the same. It's pi tune. I'm going to go and discuss a little bit while it's in standby. Uh, last time I did not tell you about the transformers you see here. I am currently using a uh, microwave oven transformer. This one is for the filament, which I've as explained in the last video. I have modified it to give out a few different voltages for filament. And I have, as you can see, this transformer, I have wound it for low voltage to operate the filament on the tube. And I can, I have, um, several different taps here as you can see on these barrier strips. Okay there. Over here we see the power supply. I'm using a bridge rectifier. I'm using four diodes that you can get. They're, they're about six fifty each, six dollars fifty cents each from Matt Electronics. And here is of course the capacitor bank with little with bleeder resistors on there. This microwave oven transformer, let me explain this capacitor first. This is used, and as you can see it's an, um, print is upside down, but it's a uh, AC capacitor, 50 microfarads. These microwave oven transformers exhibit an enormous amount of um, power factor offset from the power line. And if we put in parallel uh, capacitance with this kind of AC capacitor, it'll somewhat counteract that offset and it'll end up drawing less power to about an amp or two less. On these transformers, like this one, I can only point at the wire, I can't get in there really well, but I have lifted the ground. You see that right there is the ground that used to go right there. And that was the ground uh, the ground side of the secondary high voltage winding. I've lifted that very carefully and I've run a plus and minus, well I've run uh, the one side and the other side of the microwave oven transformer through the bridge rectifier and over here it comes out as um, the high voltage plate supply. And that pretty much explains the plate supply and the filaments. I have a fan here too to keep the microwave oven transformer cool because they do get hot. I've got an extra one here that I'm not using at this time for the same purpose. And you know, the experiment uh, sometimes requires using two trans transformers, so that's why I have this breadboard set up like this so I can use transformers when I need them or as I need them. There's another view of the uh, tube right there and the, the, that, this one is the plate current and here is the cathode bias. It's biasing it at for like oh 12 volts above ground. It's not very much. The meter here is the grid current which we'll see in just a moment here. Um, I thought I'd mentioned before, I used this, well that's another transformer, but this transformer was a plate supply I experimented with last time. Here is the dummy load, and this 
again is an old dummy load that I it's probably worth about 1500 watts worth of power its resistance is uh, 53 ohms now I have a RF peak detector here which simply rectifies the RF with a couple of high voltage diodes and the capacitor and I run that over to the meter and that way I can measure the power very accurately so I'm going to turn on the plate supply again. You can see it starts up. It's got a step start. And right now it's drawn, it's drawn about 50 milliamps. Okay. Again, I'll explain the input circuit to the amplifier. I've chosen to use a antenna tuner like this MFJ antenna tuner here. Um, for the input circuit. I've used two cables, one in and one out, which go between the cathode circuit, uh, cathode input of this uh, amplifier, or amplifier two. And I can tune it to get the SWR down on the rig so it looks, so the, the impedance match for the rig matches that of the amplifier. The rig is an ICOM IC718 right now. I also own my favorite rig, which is a Kenwood 5, TS520, which has tube outputs. I like this one, but for the testing purposes, I'm using this rig today. So I have it set up in RTTY mode right now. I don't know if that can be seen on the or not, but anyway, it's in, RID, in RTTY, which when I key the mic, we'll present a carrier, unmodulated carrier, to the amplifier. Okay, here we go. And as you can see, the grid milliamp, about 110. These tubes take more uh, grid current than do the um, 572Bs. And the plate current is up about 310 milliamps. Okay, and we look down here at the meter and we see with the peak detector registers something like 233 volts. So now we come over here and do a little math. We do the uh, Ohm's law. First we got to get um, achieve the RMS power 233 volts and we're going to get the RMS value which is times point seven zero seven that equals one hundred sixty four point seven three one volts RMS because we're looking for RMS power now we square that that means multiply it by itself so that's going to be one hundred sixty four point seven three one so I'll enter that in here there's our value now we divide that by fifty resistance of the dummy load it's not an ideal 50 ohm but it, uh, it's pretty close 512 watts out that's okay that's pretty good okay also we want to look at the uh, plate voltage and in our last video we determined it's under load it's about uh, 2.5 kV the um, I'm going to change the meter now to the plate voltage probe to read plate voltage and um, we can look at this I'll check the plate voltage on the terminal below the RF choke okay unloaded is 3,000 a little over 3,000 with key down it goes to about 2400 volts some instances depending on the power line regulation it can go up to 2500 which we usually like to see right now it's in the little on the low side so there's 2400 volts plate voltage we see on the scope here too now that I'm keying the mic we can have a look at the pattern on the scope we can see that's uh, without modulation of course okay now put it back in uh, lower sideband mode look at the amplifier one two one two
And here's the display on the scope, testing 1, 2, 3, 4, KD5, MHQ. There's our test of the amplifier using the um, 3-500C tube with the, the new 170 microhenry um, RF choke I made. And the amplifier aptly puts out 500 plus watts as is. These tubes actually like to run better at about 3,000 volts under these conditions. They will put out, produce more power. They normally produce about six, around 600 watts with no problem. So this is now the, uh, the 3-500 uh, test bed RF amplifier.